Welcome to the Poetry Club here at the North Battleford Library in our lovely lecture room, lecture theater room. These poems that I'm going to read to you today are about my four children. I have two girls and two boys and a poem about a mother. So without further ado, let's get started. The first one's about my oldest son and it's entitled Childhood is Special, written August 29th, 1997. My dear little boy, you want to grow up so fast, to become a man and leave your childhood in the past. You think it's a breeze to become a man these days. There are things you don't know. Maybe it's better that way. A child knows a certain freedom that the rest of us can't share. The magic space of pretending, adults can't find it anywhere. To be able to look forward to what every day holds in store is something that we adults might just need to explore. To say what's on your mind and not worry about the result or keep a secret about something, now that is difficult. Your father is an expert, he can fix almost everything. Your mother makes a meal taste good out of anything. Don't let the golden days of childhood slip through your hands. Hopes and dreams can come true in good time, you'll understand. Each stage of life is important and you really need to enjoy. Remember, no matter what happens, you're still my little boy. My next one's about my oldest daughter, well, second child. And this one is called To Heather. I don't have a date, but uh, this is for her. To a girl who has helped me in every way, she is my daughter and most important friend. Mere words cannot express all I'd like to say. I will surely miss her when to college I send. The day she was born was a cold one indeed. Later that day, the doctor's advice we did heed. She had trouble breathing and she had to go to the city by ambulance in deep snow. Everything was all right. She came back the next day, healthy and strong, perfect in every way. Her brother had someone with whom he could play and over the years, she's grown prettier each day. She is a wise soul, more than I at that age. The complexities of life never phase her at all. What she does with her life, it'll be fine, I gauge. Her sincerity and kindness will always stand tall. My next one is about my second son. And that was written June the 25th, 1998. He just loves to flash his mischievous grin, expecting me to forgive any trouble he's in. Since the day he was born, he's been close to my heart. When he becomes a man, I dread the day will part. Being a middle child has not bothered him one little bit. When the wheels turn in his head, when the wheels turn in his head, when the wheels start turning, oh my, oh boy. <laughs> Should I start this one again? I think so, okay. My second son, he just loves to flash his mischievous grin, expecting me to forgive any trouble he's in. Since the day he was born, he's been close to my heart. When he becomes a man, I dread the day will part. Being a middle child hasn't bothered him one little bit. When the wheels turn in his head, his lips won't quit. The entire family swears that he must have a hollow leg 
and you don't want to be near if he's eat, eaten a pickled egg. Basically, he has a good heart, that I've found to be true. But he is very easily led by others to do things he shouldn't do. Most times he is willing to help in any way that he can. Looking at him now, it's difficult to believe, to believe one day he'll be a man. One can only hope we're giving him a good start on life's road. No one knows what's in store for him. We hope we have bestowed a sense of right and wrong and the ability to deal with others fair. Whatever he decides to do with his life, we will always be there. And my youngest child is a girl. And this is entitled Autumn Lee Marie, and it was written December 15th, 2009. Mature at times beyond her years, this girl has spit and fire. Says what she thinks without a fuss, She's what she'd call a live wire. With artistic skills from her father, she is more than generously blessed. Pride and determination help her succeed in doing her very best. From the time she was petite, herself she learned to stand up for. With three older siblings on the beat, Autumn became a toughie to the core. In sports, she has a special knack, knowing where to be and what to do. <clears throat> Enthusiasm she does not lack, a true competitor through and through. She knows what she wants and goes for it. Whatever she chooses, she will complete with hard work and never a doubt. And my final poem today is about a person called Mum. Uh, I thought I had a date on this, but I guess I don't. But it probably is about that 97, 98. <clears throat> that seems to be when I wrote most of my poems. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've said, you're still her little angel when she tucks you in bed. A hug and a kiss cures many an injury done at play. When you're ill from the flu, home's where you want to stay. Through thick and thin, a mother's heart is always there. When it appears there is no one else around to care. A teacher, a nurse, a chauffeur, and a short order cook. All this she supplies for free with a knowing look. Someone to talk about the many trials we have in this life. Someone you want to meet your very soon to be wife. Someone who's cared for you since the day you were born. Now her cheeks and her hands are so tired and worn. Treasure the time you have left with your mother. You might not have much time. Don't say why bother. Someone who knows all about you, loves you just the same. A person called mom doesn't need any other name. Well, I hope you've enjoyed those poems. And that's all the time that we have left for today. So I hope to see you next time for the Poetry Club Online. Take care.